It sounds pretty good. Alrighty, let's get this thing going, man. So, what's up, what's up, guys? This is Echo Breaker. We're going to do a little bit of live stream tutorials uh, with, with everyone. Um, I know I've been waiting to do this video for a long time. And I know a lot of you guys have been... Looking forward to a type of video like this. Um, so we're just going to kind of walk from the background up all the way from, you know, uh, things that you can buy just starting out, uh, doing streaming, for doing it for $5, up to like, you know, $200, $300 setups, kind of what I do and how I run through my shows on a weekly basis, and uh, just typical practice tips for people who are wanting to do this at home and starting up. Um, I'm going to let people come in. Uh, kind of get in the show, be able to ask some questions, etc. So I'm also be willing to take questions this entire time. So I haven't really gone and done a show like this. I look like the slap chop guy. I know I look like the slap chop guy with this little, this little microphone sitting here. But um, like I said, I'm gonna let people kind of get into it first. Let people know kind of what's going on um, while we're doing the show, right? Let's see. Do, do, do. What's up, Wolf? How you doing, bud? Oh, lost Wolf. All right, so I'm going to kind of, got, kind of get into this. If there's questions, like I said, people wanting to go and ask me stuff while, we'll, uh, while we're setting up the, the streaming things, be free to ask it. Um, but the biggest question I have for a lot of DJs is the, the easiest one. So, Cody, you know, I don't have all the stuff that I have around here. I don't have the banners. I don't have the lights. I don't have the things. I have a smartphone, and I have, you know, my turntables, I have my stuff, but I have no idea how I'm going to be able to, to DJ or be able to live stream or do it at the quality you do it. Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Um, first recipe is you have a smartphone. Any type of smartphone works. Uh, if you want to do it on Facebook Live, that's fine. Personally, my preference is Chew. Uh, there's a lot of issues right now with copyright infringement, uh, with people taking down Facebook posts. Um, taking down YouTube, taking down Twitch. What I found is a lot easier is if you just go and you live stream straight onto Chew. There's plenty of different live streaming applications that you can use on your phone um, that allow you to stream to Chew. I think one's called Live.me. There's one that's Wave.me Player. Um, there's a couple of different versions. Uh, but if you go and you download one of those versions, you should be able to go and do it off of off there. And now the one type of device um, that you're going to need um, is a splitter, which is a microphone headphone splitter. I'm going to kind of go and show this to the camera. I'm going to get really close here so you guys can see it. This one's called StarTech. It's a 3.5 mil splitter. This cost me like 10 bucks on Amazon to get, and I can just go and plug it straight into my, uh, straight into my phone. And I can plug my booth monitors, so my RCAs, so RCA to 1.5 mil, straight into this. And then I can live stream on my phone. And I can have the same quality as like the live streams that I do with like an audio interface, right? Um, the second thing that you can do that helps your, your stream tenfold is invest in a stand. Um, so I guess we'll talk about equipment first. Whoa, five people. That's a lot of people. Uh, what's up? What's up, guys? Like I said, we're just talking about different live streaming equipment, different things. I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, but this is kind of the way I'm I'm keeping off my uh, I'm uh, keeping my mind off things, right? So, taking that, there's a lot of different things you can buy. Uh, I personally enjoy uh, using a Joby. I love Joby little stands. Joby stands are my favorite. 
uh, because they can pretty much they're flexible. They can change any different form that you need. You can move them around. They have levels. They have cell phone holders on them. There's even one. There's one that I use on the ceiling there. That's magnetic. Um, I like that one as well. That one's a fairly important one uh, in order to get those ceiling shots. Um, I guess finally the other thing that I would I would invest in. I'll I'll talk about that later. But if you're just starting out and you just wanted a DJ and you're don't really care about your live streaming setup too much, but you want to have like good quality streams. The number one thing I would buy is the StarTech. Buy the StarTech, and I would buy a stand. That will go so far, so 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 far into making professional streams. Please stop going and holding your cell phones while you go and do a DJ stream. Please stop going and just like having your speaker or your microphone like listen to it. It's just it's not it's not good quality. Um, let me check and see if there's any other questions or any anything at this point. I see a lot of people coming in, coming in and out. All right. So I guess the next piece, I don't really see anyone commenting, so we're just going to kind of we're going to kind of keep rolling, keep keep pushing through this bad boy. The next question that I have um, a lot is is uh, tractor setups, specifically setups for, for OBS, how to set up OBS for the first time if you're wanting to live stream on your, your, uh, your platform, right? So I guess it would be a good time to take a look at kind of the background or the, the backdrop, the behind the scenes of what I use to go and produce these shows. Personally, the show that I use is called OBS, or the, uh, the software I use, OBS. It's a free software. Anyone can use it. You can live stream off it. It makes everything looks... It makes everything look 800 times more professional. Um, it allows you total control over your setup. So let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to go and switch it to... Hold on. I think I have a different screen. There we go. So this screen here... It's OBS. I know you guys see like the, uh, the window from hell, the crazy window, um, but I'm doing that for a reason uh, because I want to show you guys kind of what you're looking at and how you're looking at things. Um, if you look here in the bottom right corner, you have your stop streaming, your, your start stop streaming, your stop recording. Here you can click. Basically, you can record the show and keep it locally for whatever reason um, you want to keep it locally. If you click on studio mode, it swaps it so that you have one side that you can tamper with and then the other side um, you can kind of move things over to. Um, move it back into the main mode. So when you go and you do anything on this now, if you do anything on this frame, you'll see it. Now, if we want to go over here to the left, there's a thing called scenes. And every scene that you go and you start, when you create a scene, um, it creates basically a brand new black backdrop that you can add anything into. Um, so the on this one, I created a laptop window, which I created using Display Capture. In Display Capture, I created a laptop window, and then it just automatically created it. And then I can go and move it around. I can resize it. I can do whatever I'm, I need to do. Basically, I have full control of that window. Um, in order to go into setup, so if it's your first stream, right, or if you want to add a webcam or add something along those lines. We'll we'll start with a brand new a scene just for you to kind of see what we're doing. I'm going to do this one as a test, right? This is a test. Now we have a black screen. This is a blank slate. This is as good as it gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a source and I'm going to add a video capture source. Let's say you have a webcam, right? And I'm going to add one of my my old webcams that I already have. Oh, nope, bad choice. Bad choice for webcam because that one didn't work. So we'll do another different webcam. Uh, view capture device. New one. Maybe that one. Yeah, see? Look at how big that is. So now we have our first webcam brought there. And then you can adjust it. You can do whatever you want. It comes over here on the down here on, on the drop bottom. You can go and you can, uh, let me show you on the other side, where's the screen? There we go. 
it should show you down here on your audio uh, what your uh, what's going and what isn't, and you can always switch what's going and what's like what audio is not by either messing with those sliders or changing the properties of what device is being used. Um, any questions at this point in the game? Setting up streaming? No. No questions. No stuff. Cool. All right, we're gonna keep moving. Um, that's pretty much the main things that you'll need to know for, for OBS. Uh, the biggest quirks that I have found with OBS, um, is that when you use webcams, which these webcams, uh, the ones that I use are Logitech, uh, C920s. They're about 40 bucks on Amazon. You can get them 40, 50 bucks. They're super, super cheap, but they work like a charm. They do everything you're supposed to do. Every, like this camera that I'm using right now is all uh, Logitech C920. They're super cheap. They get the job done. They plug right into your computer. I don't know why you wouldn't use them. Um, the biggest concern with them is is that they're super finicky. Uh, when Microsoft decided, or not Microsoft, I'm sorry. When Logitech decided that they were going to make webcams, they made these drivers. They didn't expect them to be used for live streaming or to input more than one webcam into a a computer so they're a little bit finicky um, and by finicky I mean that you can only put one of these webcams in a hub at a at a crack um, otherwise things get really weird they'll start glitching out and freaking out so my suggestion is, is you get the webcams and you put them on different sides of your laptop so let me see if I have a whoops there we go so I have one webcam right here plugged in and then I have one webcam plugged right here coming in and because they're on two separate hubs I'm able to go and have both of them recording now if I have them both let's say if I rip this one out and I put it over here it would kinda glitch out and freak out and you never want that um, so just initial setup stuff I would separate and have the webcams on two separate sides um, if you're running a hub you can run a webcam through a hub I do that here I have one of the webcams through a hub, um, but I would only put one webcam on a hub per side. Um, so I have my webcam running through the hub, which runs into my 3.0 port, and then I have another one running into 2.0 port on this side. And I found that works best for PCs. It may be different for Macs. I don't know Macs that well. Uh, I'm not going to go and say I know Macs really well. So just keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I would keep in mind when you're doing webcams is is that the the cables on them are excuse me the cables on them are fairly short uh, they're probably about six feet and if you're trying to do live streams like what I'm doing I have my camera way out there right I have it at least five or six seven eight feet away I have one planned on the ceiling and I have it running across right but I run out of time I run out of a uh, out of line so what I found the best you can buy online is this cable. It's called IO Gear. It's called a USB 2.0 booster cable. You can also look on on online. It's called a repeater cable. I have this on the screen so you can see it. Uh, like, see like, see like, see like, uh, there we go. Yep. Booster cable. So you guys can use the booster cable. Um, you want to make sure that you have booster repeater cable specifically because if you don't get it and you just get like a 10 foot long extension cord the extension feet on the like the max amount of feet you can use for a USB 2.0 is somewhere along the lines of like 10 to 13 feet. Um, repeater cables, if you get a bunch of them, can extend that forever. Um, but they have little transformers on them in order to make them go farther. So this one is a let's see, it doesn't even say. I'm pretty positive this one's like a 10 footer, 10 footer cable, 15 footer cable. I can I also have like a 25 footer one. It just depends. No, no, the secrets. Wes, I got to give the secrets away, bud. Like, I think it's important. I think I got to give... I got to give away the secrets for this thing. Uh, it's been a long time coming. I've had a lot of questions being asked uh, about it. Uh, what's up, Louie? How you doing, bud? Hope you're doing well, man. Like I said, for people who are joining in, um, what we're doing is we're walking through... 
uh, live streaming, what it would take to live stream, DJ live stream a, uh, a set, how you do it, how to integrate into Tractor, what are cheap ways to do it, what are expensive ways to do it, um, kind of what's the, the back ends. Um, I know, Wes. Sorry, bud. Shout out to Lil Def. I, w I always love seeing Lil Def on here. That's important. Um, let's see. Alrighty. So those are probably the main pieces. So we've talked about, right now, we've talked about the cameras. We've talked about the cameras. We've talked about how to do it cheaply. Um, we've talked about how to insert the cameras onto your, into your computer. Um, we've talked about webcam placement. I guess the other piece that I want to talk about Okay, someone else come in there? Awesome. Anyways, so I guess the other thing I want to talk about is connecting your equipment to Tractor and having it live stream on a, uh, on Chew, right? So, with Tractor, with Tractor and Serato, they're a little complicated, uh, simply because Tractor and Serato weren't like there's IceCast. There's actually little applications built within Tractor and Serato that allow you to stream to audio platforms. But OBS doesn't recognize uh, IceCast or Shoutcast or any of those type of platforms. And the way that that Tractor works, or the way that these drivers work is, is that it takes a lot of intensive CPU load in order to listen to your songs and encode them and put them out and put them out on like sound cards that are built into your controllers, right? But because they're so intensive, computer companies took shortcuts uh, in terms of creating these drivers that allow them to, to uh, stream onto devices. Um, so typically what they made was called an ASIO driver. An ASIO driver is a Windows driver that is very low latency, that's low CPU uh, intensive, but it ends up taking up um, you can only go and have one device connected to that driver at a time. So the example is that I use is that if I'm DJing, I can only I can either DJ and have sound running out of my controller, or I can have that sound that's supposed to come out of my controller be running into my computer for a live stream. But I can't do both. Um, but there's ways you can work around it. There's a lot of ways you can work around it in Tractor. There's ways that I do it. I'll walk through kind of a couple options of, of how you can do it and uh, we'll work through the procedure. So, the first way to do it, which is like the least invasive but the most expensive, is to get a Focusrite and audio interface unit uh, that costs you probably about $125 and you just run your master right into it and you run your booth into your speakers and then when you go onto OBS, you just click, hey, I'm going to go and get on my focus right. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's the most expensive route. I'm not the biggest fan of doing the, the most expensive route, to be honest. Um, you can do it. I like it because it's always stable and then I don't have to worry about anything internally or any of the other stuff. Uh, I just know it's always going that focus right. So I can I can tell my levels. I can manipulate the levels if I need to. I just like going and having the focus right there. But let's say you're like, Cody, I don't want to spend, I don't know, I don't want to spend 100, 100 bucks on it, or I'm not a producer, I don't have one of those in-house. Um, if you're not a producer, you need to get one first off because they're important. But if you are a producer, if you don't have one, um, and you don't want to pay for one, there's ways to get around it in, in Tractor. I'm going to kind of show you a way you can do it in Tractor. Um, what you can do, let's go to, go to our screen here, and we're going to come here, and we're going to go to Tractor. Sorry for the mess of my desktop. It's just, it's a mess right now. What you can do is you can route your master channel into your master channel input um, back into itself. So if I was going to run run it myself, I would run my masters. So this is like 
my input right now, I'd run this into my uh, master and then my now, my input is on channel D. So channel D is now considered live input, but I'm never actually playing it. I turn the volume down on it, right? And then I never actually use it. Let's go into our settings. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I know, I know, Wes. It's, it's bad, man. I was supposed to go and clean it off a while ago, and I haven't done it yet. It's, it's a work in progress. Yeah, I know. I need to organize it. I know. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. So anyways, we're going to go to our input routing. Input routing, I have on input check deck D. I have channel B left and right, right in the inside of tractor. So now it's routed correctly. So now what I can do inside of OBS is I can go to properties. And I can click down here. And if you look, there's a, there is a master tractor audio, right? And then there's a monitor tractor audio. I can hit monitor and monitor will solve my problem because it will take whatever is being sent out of D um, and bring that in as its own input. And then you can pretty much run all of your stuff through the tractor sound card without having to buy an audio interface. Um, it's stable. It works. I've tried it. Uh, I don't like it because I like my four channels. But if you don't want to, you can always use up a channel and do it that way. Um, those are pretty much the two main ways I would do it out of Tractor. Uh, there's a couple other ways that people have talked about um, before, uh, which I can also talk about while on, uh, whoops, not the screen. There we go. Then we can talk about while we're on here. Some people say use Soundflower. Uh, I've never had Soundflower work correctly. Uh, I've downloaded it like two or three times. Um, Soundflower never worked. Um, there's also another way you could do it, but it's incredibly unstable. Um, there's a drive in Tractor. I'm going to go to my screen right now. There's a drive in Tractor called uh, Shared. And Shared will technically make it sound right. Um, but I've seen in the past it's incredibly unstable. It's also called a Wasapi drive. That's what I call it, Wasapi. Because if you look at it, it's spelled Wasapi. It's right there. See how it's Shared Mode, Wasapi, Shared Mode. They're all just garbage. Um, I've never had them actually been able to play through a full live stream set without them freaking out and crackling and uh, just getting a lot of distortion. So I would just avoid that solution like the plague. Uh, I wouldn't touch it with, with uh, a 10-foot pole. So I think that's probably the main, the main couple things. Uh, let's see. We get right on. We got a couple people watching. Ooh. Important to note, this can only be done on the S4 and the S8, right? Not the S5 or S2. Actually, Sam, it can be done on both. Um, it can be done on any of those platforms. Uh, as long as you have input routing available, you should be able to do it. The S8 has input routing. The S5 um, also has input routing. S2, you can't, but there is a really good... Uh, there's a really good website you can go to um, that allows you to, to take a look. Um, if you go on to Mixler, or if you look up Mixler, hold on. Shh, shh. Mixler S2 Tractor. Broadcast using Tractor Mac. Broadcast using Tractor Windows. This kind of talks about how you can do it. Um, Actually, so if you have any questions, those are actually pretty good ways to do it. Um, let me see. They talk about the audio. So, yeah. See, this way wouldn't really work on OBS. So S2, you're probably going to have to buy an audio interface um, in order to do that. Um, you won't be able to go and, and do it any other way, really. Uh, so let's go and move on to the next question. Um, Love you too, Scotty. What's up, buddy? I hope you're doing well, man. Um, the in-out dual routing. Sam, what do you mean, bud? Um, I'm just trying to understand. I 
I just need to know Simon. Well, while I'm waiting on that question, um, I guess we can talk about any other potential setup stuff. Uh, would probably be a good idea is to kind of go over Chu. Um, let's see. Oh, nope, I don't see any question yet. Uh, when you have it, let me know, Sam, and we'll go over the... We'll go over it together. Just asking if the audio is in software or hardware. So the audio input is going to be a hardware solution. It's going to be a hardware solution uh, because you're going to actually gonna have to route your master into your input like on the controller itself. So like if I were to like pull this this puppy down, hold on, it gets it gets kind of sticky. There we go. All right. So let me pull the other screen down. Whoops. There. So if you look here on mine, I actually routed my master right there. Whoop, I'm trying to get the light. There we go. My master right there into my input. And then you're going to have to go and set that up within Tractor. So if I go on to my Tractor setup, right, my Tractor is now a live input. So now I know that that's, that's already being delegated to, uh, to it. So it's like a hardware and a software solution. Um, if you do the focus right, the audio interface, that's like an all hardware solution. And then all you would do is, is when you go into desktop audio, you click properties and you go down to your focus right right there and bada bing bada boom, you're in business, right? Let's see. So those are the probably those are the two main questions uh, on those. So I guess the final thing is, is all right, so we've talked about the routing. We've talked about how to do it with a cell phone. We've talked about how to do it with with, uh, with webcams, what type of webcams you should get. Uh, we've talked about the controllers a little bit. We've talked about Tractor in terms of setting up. Um, the last thing that we would really want to go over is the setup for Chew. Um, that's pretty much the only thing I got. Are there any other questions before I get into Chew? Yeah, see, you're right, uh, Sam. The S2 doesn't have any inputs, so you'd have to get creative. Uh, the suggestion I'd have for an S2 is I'd get a Focusrite, a 2i2. Um, do not get the second gens. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with the second gen 2i2s. They just distort, and they get really weird and wonky. Um, but I've had this Focusrite for a year, two years now, the first generation, and I've never had a single problem with it. And the quality difference, you can't really tell in between the two. So I would just say buy the Focusrite first gen because it's cheaper if you don't have the input routing yourself. Um, also, if you do the, the audio interface route, um, it pretty much makes you device agnostic. So if you're using CDJs, if you're using whatever, I don't care what you're using, you can always plug into an audio interface and run that into your computer. Um, pro tip, pro tip time. While we're speaking about uh, routing in your audio interfaces and whatnot, um, you can stream and you can DJ off of the same computer, but I would be wary of doing that simply because like my computer gets stressed out all the time and I'm running an i7 I'm running an i7 uh there we go whoops man if I could only just get my stuff together today awesome I use this one little computer right here I like this computer a lot but it's an i7 and it has 12 gigs of ram and it struggles as an ssd in it and I push it way too hard I run like three 1080p streams in it I'm DJing in it. It's just difficult. If you have two laptops and you can spread the love, I would spread the love. If you can't, that's fine. Um, but just remember that streaming can be an intensive uh, act on your computer. So you're just going to want to go and uh, limit um, yourself 
limit what you're doing, shut down applications, shut down Dropbox or whatever's on your computer in order to spare up resources to stream and DJ off of the same computer. Now let's get to the fun part. Let's get to setting up Chew uh, because Chew's pretty much the only other thing that we haven't gone over uh, while we're here. Um, so I'm going to go on to Chew, right? I'm going to log straight into Chew. And I'm going to hit go live with a, with a show. And it's going to give me all this stuff about Echo Breaker Show and Echo Breaker on Chew and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to put, like, this is a test. 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 And we're just going to create a show just to have have something going. But this isn't going to actually work, right? Now, there's two things that happen with this. It's going to create a stream URL, which is your stream piece here, and your stream key. And you're going to download OBS. Once you have OBS, you're going to open it up. And you're going to go into your settings. Your settings are going to show up kind of like this. And you go into your stream. And your stream is going to have a stream URL and that stream key. And you're just going to copy paste your URL and that stream key in there. And you're going to click OK. And that's pretty much all you have to do on that end. Uh, there's not too much else that you have to do. Uh, one suggestion that I do make is that you want to try and push uh, your auto quality as high as you possibly can. Um, so on this end... You're going to want to go and do, let me see if I can bring up the main screen again. There we go. You're going to want to do like 3,000 bits uh, a second. That's the max that you can take. Um, Facebook can't take more than that. It, it even takes less than that. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your, uh, your, your streams that don't put it higher than 3,000. Um, I'll show you a quick setting on how you would you'd go and you would uh, you'd do that. You go into your settings. Go to your output, right? You see it says rate control, your bit rate. Don't put it over 3,000. 3,000, if you put it higher than that, like Chew and other websites probably won't accept it, even though you can push it. Um, I would make sure that you have enough bandwidth, too. Uh, 3,000 is like 3 megabits per second up, and some households just don't have that. So I would check your, do a speed test.net, check your internet, internet service provider and see if you, they can provide you up speeds in order for it to work. Um, if you can't put 3,000, that's fine. You can always do like 800 or 500, do a lower quality stream. Um, but it will, uh, you'll still be able to, to, to send something out. One of the final things uh, that I also want to talk about is that if you're streaming to Facebook, if you're adamant, you're like, Cody, you know, after everything else, I still want to stream on Facebook and try and still stream on there even though they're going to boot me off and do that. Uh, fun fact, change your keyframe interval to a 2. Uh, that, I learned that the hard way. I had no idea why it did, wasn't working. Um, but once I changed the keyframe interval to 2, uh, everything worked the way it was supposed to. So just keep that in mind. Um, any other questions? I'm going to pause for a second. What's up, bud? What's up, Drew? How you doing, buddy? Doing well, man? So, are there any other questions or any other comments from anybody about what's going on that I need to cover? This is that moment. Speak now or forever hold you peace. Alrighty. So I guess the next question the next the next piece that we're gonna cover is going to be, we're going to go back to donate. So you can see my shedding face uh, on this. 
The last piece that I want to cover um, is let's say that you want to stream to multiple websites. Uh, so currently what I, when I stream, when I do my stuff, uh, I stream to Facebook, I stream to, I stream to Twitch, I stream to YouTube, I stream to Chew. Chew, I love you guys, and that's the best platform of all of them, especially if you're trying to live stream DJ. Um, it's just the best one. That's the one that I never get pulled. I get copyright infringements on literally everything else. Uh, and uh, another one called Stream Up, but Stream Up has kind of faltered in the past, so it's not even worth your time. But let's say you want to go through that. Let's say you want to spend the money and you're like, all right, I want to stream on multiple websites. I want to try this out. I want to see if it works. Just see how, how it goes. There's a website that you can go to. And that website is called restream.io. I'm going to go to it. I'm going to show you guys what it is. This is the all the inner secrets, man. All the inner secrets. So there is restream.io. I'm sitting on it. I'm going to actually exit this one because I already have it open. Right where I can go and add for free any channels that I want uh, and make it make it work. So I'm doing YouTube events, Facebook, obviously, Twitch, and Chew all at the same time. It works fairly well. But because Facebook isn't included in the channels on uh, Restream, I have to spend maybe like $15, $20 a month on just going in and making sure that Facebook is active. So that's what I was saying. If you want Facebook, like we, you can stream on Facebook. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, every, all of my, uh, all the data that I have from all the shows that I've done has pointed to Chu having the highest quality, uh, highest quality viewers, the highest quality uh, watchers, and they pay me the most amount in terms of tipping than any other platform out there. So I just consider Facebook to be a waste of time. Uh, there's a lot of big issues with, with Facebook and like vanity metrics where Facebook boosts their uh, the views of a show when it ex is like actually isn't that big. Um, so I would just keep that in mind that whatever you see on Facebook probably isn't the actual views and the actual engagement that you were planning on. Um, let's see. So I use Restream. You can just turn them on and off, like I said. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, there's a stream key and there's the stuff there. I'm now going to have to swap out that stream key because you guys obviously see it. Um, but, like I said... That's pretty much that's pretty much the back end of of Chew and how you do this. Um, like I said, I don't go and uh, I'm not trying to hire anything. I want other people in Atlanta to be able to stream and start DJing, and I want to see more DJs streaming in Atlanta, uh, jamming it out and and partying it out. And so, and I've had a lot of questions in terms of connecting Tractor to it. I've had a lot of questions in terms of kind of how all the setup goes. Um, so before I shut this down for tonight, uh, it's been about 30 or 40 minutes of me talking, and I'm tired of listening to myself talk. Uh, is there any other questions or any other stuff that people want me to go over in terms of live streaming uh, that they would want me to talk about before I shut this bad boy down? Um, Silo, I see you on here, bud. Uh, I don't know who the other people are. Looks like a bunch, looks like a couple lurkers. Lurkers hanging out. Hold on. I'll find out who you are. Uh, well, I guess I want, I gotta find out who you are. There's just gonna be random people going and watching. So. Are there any other questions before I shut this bad boy down? Uh, like I said, um, we've covered we've covered gear, we've covered extensions, we've covered how to connect it with your phone, we've covered restream, we've covered how to connect it with your with your uh, with your controller. Um, any other finicky stuff? I'm not playing music tonight, though. I'm just letting you know. I'm just not really feeling the vibe to play music. It's been more of just kind of a 
Calm, calm, cool, and collective night, and I wanted to make sure that I, I did a, uh, a show like this so that people had a better understanding of how all of the, the stuff works. No problem, Sam. I'm glad, man. I'm glad that it, it was helpful. Um, like I said, I, I've been holding on to the kind of this knowledge for a while. I wanted people to be able to take a look at this and refer to it. And I can send people this video. It will always be on Chew. Uh, this, this show will always be on Chew forever. So if you have any questions, you can always refer to this video to see kind of how this stuff works. Um, Serato works pretty much the same way. Uh, uh, is, and same thing with the Mac piece, um, except for Soundflower. Uh, I've heard Soundflower helps with the with the with the driver issues. Uh, I just don't have a Mac, so I just can't really do it. All the thumbs. I need all the thumbs. Give me all all of those thumbs. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, like I said, I will answer them on the chats. I can answer them later. You guys have my information. Um, I may do, if, if I get enough questions, I'll do a follow-up stream to talk about some stuff. But that's all I had to cover. So, guys, thank you so much for taking your time to, to listen. I know, you know, this has been kind of boring uh, in terms of super paper dry. and uh, But I'm appreciative that you guys are listening. And let me know if there's anything, any other questions or any other stuff you guys have in the future. But otherwise, I'm going to clock out here. I'm going to check out. I'm done hearing myself talk. Uh... Thanks so much, Sam. Thanks so much, guys, for listening. We will go, and uh, I will see you guys soon on Monday. Monday, we're going to be back on it. I got DJ IV in here. We're going to be DJ4. We're going to be doing some turntable stuff, so that's going to be super hella dope, right? So, anyways, guys, love you so much. Talk to all of y'all soon. Peace out.